Hey, everybody, and welcome to this session and Ask Me Anything, or, or frankly, more likely, Ask Us Anything about Google Workspace development. We're so glad you're here. We're so happy you're attending I.O. I hope you're having a great time. Uh, my name is Charles, and I am a developer advocate, and I focus on Google Workspace as a development platform. So I'm happy here to share my knowledge with you. Hopefully, you can answer all the questions that you throw at us. Um, if you're watching live, and I hope you are, can you check the box on the side and find your way over to insert some questions and get them live by our esteemed panel, which let me bring them on now and have them introduce themselves. Uh, hi, I'm Matthew Isaac. I'm the product lead for the Workspace platform. Hi, uh, Olaf Hubel. I'm the lead for the developer relationship team for Google Workspace. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Basil, a developer relations engineer. Awesome, and thanks, guys. And this is going to be a great session. So let's dig into some of the questions. Let's start off our first one. I think it's a great question. Uh, as we know, a lot of folks at I.O. are developers, and they use other tools. So Adeline's asking, as a developer, why should I consider, why should I care about building on Google Workspace? Olaf, as the head of the DevRel team for Workspace, what do you say? Yeah, great question. Uh, thank you, Adeline. Um, I mean, building on Workspace, it, it just, it's all about reaching users, right? Um, so Workspace has uh, more than 2 billion users, um, 6 million businesses, 120 million uh, education users. So being able to take your application and integrate that into that and reaching those users where they work or how they work and really making it a seamless uh, solution so they don't have to leave their workflow and, and jump out. Um, that's really the main reason why, why people uh, develop on top of. Um, you can also integrate it into your own solutions with our APIs. And, and the same reason, again, right, it's just making sure that all those users, where they work every day, where they're being productive, integrating into that and making sure your solution uh, ties nightly, nicely into that. Awesome. Hey, anybody else want to jump in with any more on top of that, Matt or Steve? Uh, yeah, I just want to echo, uh, you know, part of what Olaf said. It's it's really about making users uh, just more effective and more, more productive, uh, whether it's yourself with App Script or, you know, if you have a solution that you want to uh, have it integrate better with Workspace, um, just creating those really great user experiences to help users throughout their day is uh, you know, really powerful. Awesome. Matt, anything you want to say, jump in. Yeah, I mean, Workspace is the place where... End users, whether it's consumers or businesses or students, get work done. And if you can help people get work done faster, better, more efficiently, make people more productive, that's a place where you want to be embedded. Awesome. So next question from Stefan, I believe. Um, what are the types of applications developers can build on Google Workspace? As we know, Workspace is broad, it's wide, there's tons of apps, there's tons of different ways users use it, everything from communication, email and chat, creating documents, storing content in Drive. It's a big topic. So what do you say, Steve? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. There's, uh, you know, I would say, you know, an endless variety of apps that can be either, you know, built on or you know integrated with workspace um, i mean these are everything from enterprise applications that do compliance and auditing to productivity apps um, to just simple automations and workflows that help people throughout their day um, yeah i mean i you know i've been working at workspace for a while and you know, i've seen you know literally thousands of apps that have integrated work workspace and you know they're all unique and um, you know, bring value to users and some have, you know, really, uh, you know, narrow use cases, right? It's, you know, maybe, you know, for a small audience, but for that audience, uh, you know, those features are actually really important and really powerful. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Steve. And, you know, as a developer advocate, I talk to a lot of customers. I talk to a lot of developers. I talk to a lot of people who are either full-time developers or just hobbyists. And the fact that you can do so many things you can be so innovative and you can cover so many use cases and whether they're small apps or big apps, it, it's wide ranging. So, you know, I really encourage anybody thinking about it, anybody here listening in, uh, just explore it. And, and we'll, we'll tell you where to go. Uh, hopefully when we have some of these questions uh, that pop through. Um, so let's take the next one from Ben. Hey Ben, thanks for the question. Uh, I hear Workspace referred to as a development platform as well as a productivity suite. Great point, Ben. What makes it a platform and what are some of the tools that developers can leverage? Matt, you head up the platform team for Workspace. This has to be you. What do you say? Yeah, I mean, I think the reference rating productivity suite is exactly how 
um, the 2 billion users see it, right? Whether you're using Gmail or Calendar or Drive Editors Meet, uh, you are being productive and getting your work done. Uh, but what we want to talk to you about, what we are talking to you about, is the capabilities of Workspace as a development platform. That is the ability for you to build things on top of or into uh, Workspace. So I'll give you some examples. I think we talked, uh, mentioned briefly AppSheet, um, sorry, AppScript. Uh, AppSheet is also important. Uh, AppScript, the ability to uh, create macros uh, in Sheets, uh, or really to write full-fledged applications, the ability uh, AppSheet, which is a, a no-code tool to write uh, uh, applications that will uh, link different pieces of workspace. We have APIs, which allow you to uh, access and manipulate data in your own app. Perhaps you're creating an analysis app. Uh, you know, Maybe you'll come up with the next great idea for determining the uh, social graph within a company. Uh, we have things like chatbots and add-ons, which enable you to enhance uh, the workspace experience. You are building something that will uh, be embedded within workspace or, and be where users are from day to day. So I think there's a lot of different platform tools that are available to to folks. And that's what we talk about as a platform and not just the productivity suite that everybody knows and loves. Yeah, it's a, it's a great, great um, answer. Anybody else want to chime in? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I take a, a little bit of a contrarian view there. Um, <laughs> in, just to uh, throw out a different perspective. Um, no, I mean, it, it, you know, it is a, a platform. It's, it's not a platform in the same sense that, you know, cloud platform is or Chrome or Android or something like that where, where you can build anything, right? It's, it's, it's not, the, I don't think it's really the goal to allow people to build, you know, arbitrary apps on an app script. Um, you could, you could build a lot with it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily the best tool for building certain types of apps. Um, so, you know, I, I always take a look at it more from the lens of uh, integration, automation, workflow, things like that, where it's, um, you know, it, um, adding value to workspace and adding value to the user experience and less about uh, a general purpose development platform. No, I 100% I agree with you on that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to plug my session here at IO. Um, I did a session called Enhancing User Experiences Within Google Workspace. And really the focus of that is as a developer, the key is, can I build value? Can I enrich the user experience? Can I combine my solution, my data, my workflows, whatever it is, in the way that a user is working with the workspace to make you know, kind of that uh, you know, two flavors better than together than one type of an experience. And I think that's really what makes it kind of a special experience uh, to, to build solutions. So uh, my two cents on top of that. Hey, let me bring in a another question, which I think follows up very nicely to this. This one is from Martin. Uh, it just came in. Uh, a little bit of a long question, but a great question. Uh, with a, a wide, diverse range of products, um, for developers, are there any particular ones that you'd start recommending where you're seeing growth in market demand that I have an answer here, but Matt, let me defer to you on this because as the head of the platform, you're probably seeing, hearing, feeling demand from customers, developers, enterprises. Where are some of the hot spots in the platform? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I think it all depends on the sort of the mindset in which you're uh, approaching your target audience, uh, and certainly you can start from a raw user account. Like, where are the most users spending the most time? Uh, and there are several very large products in Workspace, obviously, Gmail, Calendar, uh, Drive, Editors, Meet. So that's a lot of users spending a lot of time uh, in them. And that's one way to, to approach the problem. Um, I think the, the question also asks, you know, where, where do we think the largest growth is coming from? Not where is, you know, where are people today, but where are people tomorrow? Uh, if I were to pick a particular app, I think I'd call out chat. Uh, I think we see a couple trends there. One is from a product perspective, we have been rolling out and we'll continue rolling out chat to more, more folks. So you will see it rolling out to more enterprise customers and more uh, consumers over the, the coming months. Uh, and we also just generally see usage trends, which suggest that people are using chat more and more, both for personal as well as for, for corporate use. So that's certainly one area we'd see a, a, a strongly growing market. Um, I think I also emphasize that I don't think in many cases you necessarily just want to start out with what is my biggest audience, but rather where I'm adding the most value. Um, so if you have a, uh, an idea for a solution that will help users significantly uh, provide value to them, if you're providing value to them, presumably you can you know, monetize it and make some you know, users will pay you because you're you know, enhancing their business. Uh, you're much better off going after to provide a lot of value, even if it's a smaller number of users to start, 
than just trying to target the largest number of users. So I would definitely encourage folks to find that happy medium between the largest target audience as well as the value that they can provide. Cool. I want to ask the other panelists uh, one or two word or product answer. Where do you see the hotspot? What excites you the most? What do you think? Um, start with you, Steve. What's the what's the soup du jour that you're interested in as far as the different technologies? Um, yeah, kind of the same with Matt. Uh, chat is, I think, one that there's a lot of potential for. Um, and uh, yeah, I would I would love to see more integration options with Meet. Um, I don't think we're there yet, but I think it's it's an area where I, you know I would love to see. Um, you know, different ways to combine applications with, uh, you know, live video and chat and, and all that it makes them, you know, really, you know, really cool experiences. Olaf, one or two words, pick one. Same, uh, chat, chat bot. It's, it's all about chat for me. I kind of feel like this is that show <laughs> where the singer's saying, we're going to go four votes for chat. <laughs> <laughs> four chairs turned around for chat. Uh, so real quick, um, uh, Yagi-san coming to us from Australia. Hello, Yagi-san. Uh, is there plans to further expand capabilities for card services and means uh, to provide greater consistency and security? What's on the horizon? Matt, I know you can't tell us all the dirty secrets that uh, aren't ready yet or aren't fully baked, but what can you say under not NDA about kind of the direction and future of card and building add-ons or even chatbots, for that matter of fact? Yeah, cards are actually, as you mentioned, cards are sort of the underlying... Uh, uh, framework for both add-ons and chatbots. So wherever you go in workspace, uh, there is a card framework which allows you to lay out your your user interface. Uh, we are definitely uh, improving the card framework on an ongoing basis. Uh, as Charles says, it's probably the wrong form to give precise dates uh, and uh, uh, features, but maybe I'll frame it as uh, we're sort of making investments in two different areas. One is general layout options. Uh, so different ways, more enhanced ways of, of laying out your UI. Uh, and the other one is improving interactivity. Uh, so for example, it's not just a question of can I lay out items, but can I do things like uh, autocomplete or dynamic, dynamically populate a, a list? And so we're investing uh, in those sorts of areas as well. So definitely plans to expand the capabilities of the card framework. Awesome. Next question up is from Shirley. Sure, that's a great question. I mean, as we know, it's better to find code than write code. I'm looking for practical examples of app scripting and doc automations that can be adapted for use within a small business. What repositories are out there and where should one be looking? I think the solution gallery is a great one we could probably talk about. Uh, also, you know, Steve, you're kind of the keeper of the GitHub magic when it comes to a lot of the stuff around workspace development. Steve, what are some of the places you would point folks to? Uh, yeah, Solutions Gallery, um, certainly for App Script, is probably the first place I'd look. Um, but it's pretty much what the Solutions Gallery is meant for, is to show uh, practical use cases for um, how you can apply App Script to solve, you know, kind of common like work group size business problems, if it's running an event or um, you know, maintaining a out of office calendar for your team or things like that. Um, GitHub, you do have a presence like um, github.com slash uh, Google Workspace. And there's a bunch of app script samples on there, uh, on there as well as for just uh, the entire suite of APIs uh, in Workspace as well. Um, and then the GDE community, there's, there's a couple of great resources that uh, a few of our GDEs maintain um, where they really keep tabs on um, not just their own solutions that they create, but also um, a few of them keep tabs on the entire community. Um, and there's a, a site, I forgot to, exactly what the, I forgot the URL for the site offhand, um, but there's a great one that ha it's, a, it's a catalog of all sorts of great open source uh, app script projects uh, that are, are really great for um, giving you a head start in building something. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of things just to, to pile on to what Steve said. First of all, the solution gallery is actually a part of our developer documentation. So if you go to developers.google.com slash workspace, which is the only URL we're going to give you, because that'll help you find all those things. The solution gallery is listed up there. There's about 20, 25 solutions that will help you get started to learn how to build some of these things. Some you can tweak pretty quickly and actually use them as working samples. The other thing Steve mentioned, super important, um, there's an awesome 
tremendous community that has been around for an awful long time. Uh, you know, Ascript, as you mentioned, is now in its 11th, but we're rushing towards its 12th year, I think, as far as a tool. There are many, many hobbyists, enthusiasts, community folks that build these solutions. And not just to be funny, but Google it. There's so much out there. I almost never write code. I borrow code. I think it's so much faster and easier. Uh, my own little secret. But anyway, uh, definitely a lot of things you can go from. Hey, let's pull, pull the next question from Alan. And Alan, I love you for this question. This is such a great question. I love the fact that just recently this week, we talked about all these great new innovations about smart canvas. Guys, what is going to be an API for it? I'm mad. I'm going to have to turn to you on this one. I just, I, I want this answer because I know it's not tomorrow, but what do you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, as a group of folks who work on uh, extensibility platforms, we are thrilled to hear folks asking for an integration platform to something that has been obviously just announced uh, this week. Um, so for those who aren't familiar with Smart Canvas, you know, I think Charles mentioned it, uh, go back and watch the, uh, I believe it's in the first 10 or 20 minutes, the, uh, the keynote. Um, that will give you an idea of what uh, Smart Canvas is and our direction uh, with it within the editors, and especially Google Docs. Uh, it is very much on our radar to make sure that uh, there are extensibility options in there, uh, that when you uh, address a, a chip, that you can address not only to uh, the types of capabilities that were shown there in terms of first party, but uh, that is possible for uh, developers to plug into those. Uh, at this time, I couldn't give you a, a date because uh, if you've noticed in the presentation yesterday, I don't believe we've announced a date specifically for for Smart Canvas, uh, but I promise you that it is on our radar when we launch it to make sure that we have uh, options for sensibility as well. Awesome. Next question is a great question, and it comes from Ben. And I happen to know this is Ben Collins uh, following up on if you're looking for a great repository and a great getting started and great learning resources, and if you love spreadsheets, uh, ben Collins, just Google him, is a phenomenal resource for it. So, Ben, thanks for that question. Super appreciate that. Um, can you talk about reusability of code for domains? Great topic. Citizen developers create a lot of useful custom functions, but it's hard to share with colleagues. Libraries and add-ons are, in fact, hard. Um, I could ask Steve this question, but I know his answer, so I want to hear from Matt. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure I know Steve's answer. So I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure I know my answer. <laughs> um, there is no question that we can, and frankly, we will make it easier for people to share functions that they have written in, you know, specifically, uh, typically an app script across a domain. So, uh, you know, again, if you, if you're someone other than the person who asked this question, you're thinking, well, what does, what does this sort of mean? Uh, imagine that you have, you know, you work in a, in a bank and you've written a, a script, which, uh, computes, I don't know, value at risk or some financial calculation in a more efficient way. And you feel that should be shared, uh, with your colleagues or your, um, you know, you work at, you work at Google and you've written a better way to triage bugs to manipulate a, a list a list of bugs and again you want to share that with your colleagues uh what we would like to get to is certainly the ability to publish that somewhere which is private to a domain and allow other people in the domain to uh to participate so it's yeah there you can there are ways to do that now and perhaps Stephen uh, will outline the ways in which you'd do that now we are definitely working to uh, improve that uh, in the future to make it uh, you know clearer and simpler in terms of how you do it well, Steve, anything to share or add on top of that? I know it's a uh, Achilles heel. Uh, what do you What do you say? Uh, yeah, no, I, it it should be better. Um, it's it is hard right now. It's it's not a problem that is um, for the. I would say it's not a problem that's easily solved for the audience that most likely cares about it. Um, which is if you're a more casual programmer. Uh, you know, it's there are ways to do it with GitHub, and you have tools like Class, which allow you to, you know, manage code in uh, different source code repositories. And there's ways you can do all sorts of great sharing and collaboration with it. But that is, it's a fairly you know advanced concept. Yeah. Um, and if you're somebody who just kind of casually tinkers with that script, um, you know, those tools are not necessarily the solution that is right for you. But um, for more advanced developers, there are yeah a lot of great ways to to approach that. 
The other thing I might add, like a, a really simple way to do this, useful in, in some cases, uh, essentially to share the file, share the sheet. So if you, you know, write, if you write app script, oh, Charles disagrees with that suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You can. We, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let me wrap this one up by saying I actually been talking quite a bit to the team about it, and it's a very high priority. As as, as both you mentioned, it's a tough uh, problem to to solve because we're serving a lot of audiences, and there's a lot of scripts run run out there already. Um, so anyway, hey, we got a bunch of questions left. I want to see if we can go a little bit faster and see if we can hit a few more. If you guys don't mind. Um, not that we're going to try to short on any, but let's let's see if we can go a little bit quicker. Yagi San's got a great one. Yagi San is asked uh, again from down under. What uh, what's next for the AppScript IDE, and what sort of feedback are you receiving? And I, I, let me handle this one real quickly. I think the feedback been super good. Um, again, really, the design goal was to make it really more approachable and easy and modern and fast. Everybody I know. Um, especially folks that do a lot of app scripts still prefer to use that to other tools like using class and using their own editor. It's simply so nicely built in. As far as what are the plans, um, I think we just had that with the last question. The biggest team thing the team is trying to wrestle with is how do they make inclusions of other code, whether it's snippets, samples, templates, whatever that case may be, how do we make that work? So stand by there. I'm glad you asked that question. I know the team is, is thinking about it and working on it. Dennis has got a question up for us. Dennis, any plans to add audio in or out support to the card service? Wow, that's a pretty detailed question. Matt, is that, I mean, Steve's checking his head says he wants it tomorrow. Matt, is that on the radar? I mean, as a product manager, uh, my answer to everything is that I would ideally like everything tomorrow or actually today. <laughs> so would we. As the realities of engineering so, you know, say that this is not, uh, we can't just deliver on the product manager dreams all the time. Uh, as I said, we're definitely an ongoing effort to enhance uh, the card service. Uh, I think we are focused on visual layout items more so at this time, uh, but that's definitely something for us to keep in mind. Next question from Julian. This is a tough one, and I, I hate to bring it up, but Julian's definitely right. Um, some of your APIs don't give you the most robust error messages. Sometimes you hunt for days because you know you get requests contains an invalid argument. Well, these error messages improve. Same thing for docs. Some of the docs are amazing. Some of the docs are lacking currently. This is kind of a big thing, right? You know, who wants to handle this one? Because I know there's uh, you know some sensitivity around it. Anybody? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, yeah, no, this is, um, you know, something where, yeah, like, you know, it could always be better, right? Like, no matter how good your error messages are, um, you know, the more precise and more actionable they are, the better they are for, for developers, and yeah, we fall short in a couple of cases, um, and well, I would say even a lot of cases. Um, but the, you know, it, like the more feedback we get about that, then you know we can raise those issues with the engineering teams and prioritize fixing those. Um, you know, and I've actually worked with a lot of product teams um, on you know with the engineering teams to um, revamp our messages and make them more precise. Um, Everybody wants, you know, people want to make the APIs better and more usable. So um, just, you know, make sure we get that feedback. Um, we file a bug if you get a bad error message. Um, and, you know, so like I said, the more we get, the, the easier it is to prioritize. Um, and the same for docs, right? If you see a, a problem in the docs, um, file a bug, file a feature request. Uh, and, and documentation uh, just got a, they did a big rehaul um, of a lot of their pages. So. I'm hoping that's why in, in the comment it says uh, some are amazing. And I think that comes from the new documents they've done. They they updated the, the, the homepage and they've been working really, really hard uh, to go through all the pages and, and make it more useful and, and easier to understand. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to get things right in the first try. Um, so like I said, it could always be better and you know, just it's just getting feedback. Um, yeah, and I just just to pile on there, I think our documentation has improved so much vastly recently. I mean, when I started, it was a little harder a while ago. Now I think we've done great inroads there. So I absolutely appreciate that question. Though error messages and debugging is always one of those things you have to learn to get in the game, so to speak, to be a workspace developer. And we're continuously looking on ways and how we can improve that. Next question up is from Arco. Arco asks really a great question, and, and uh, 
you know, being a developer advocate, I talk to the public all the time. And one of the things I hear about all the time is the love from the EDU segment, from folks in educational building solutions. I even hear students building solutions. It's not just developers and it's not just, you know, teachers and, and IT folks. A lot of people gravitate towards this platform. Investing in children is investing in the future. I kind of feel like a Whitney Houston song was about to break out. Uh, why will add-ons not come available for Google for Workspace for education fundamentals. Uh, Matt, I'm going to ask you this question about availability. I didn't actually know this wasn't true. And also, there's a URL if we could flash up on the screen here to actually tell us some of the initiatives we're actually doing around Classroom. Um, if the production team can throw it up or Matt answers, that'd be awesome. What do you say, Matt? I mean, both having children as well as children who use Google Workspace for education, as well as being on the team that uh, wants to make sure it's very extensible. I'm uh, quite personally invested in this, this question. Um, as it happens, uh, I'm not sure if we can flash up the URL, but uh, feel free to take a look at the uh, a blog posting from Google Classroom uh, dated February 17th, uh, titled The Peek at What's Next for Google Classroom. Uh, in that blog post, we in fact announce add-ons coming to Google Workspace for uh, education. Uh, and so that is currently in a uh, I believe a, an alpha type stage right now uh, is scheduled to be more generally available um, later. I don't know if there's a, a date on the uh, uh, date on the blog, so I'll stop myself at later as opposed to <laughs> finishing that sentence. Um, but yes, we're definitely dedicated to making sure that uh, many great education applications can work well with Classroom just because of the, again, the reach of Classroom and the, the positive impact we can have on uh, educating our youth. Oh yeah, my, my daughter's school uses classroom as well. So yeah, I'm you know, su super invested in making sure that uh, you know they have a great experience. Julian is back with another question, and it's a good one. Uh, is uh, CLASP only a pet project currently, or is it going to get official support? I like what you've done with the IDE, but nothing beats my own IntelliJ tools. Steve, you're close to this. It's open source. What say you on Clasp? Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I would, yeah, I don't think it's considered an official project. Um, most, most of our open source things are uh, considered, considered unofficial, even though they, uh, you know, do have Googlers maintaining and enhancing them. Um, Clasp, uh, you know, hasn't been updated in a while. That's changing. I actually have been spending uh, the past week or so uh, doing some work to clean up some things. And there's some community contributors as well who are working to make it a lot better. Um, but, you know, it will likely remain unofficial. Um, there's just the, you know, the nature of the beast. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're not, you know, interested in making it better and listening to feedback and uh, trying to make the tool as, as useful as possible. Um, so actually, it, it is something I was working on earlier today. Um, I will be working on it more tomorrow. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you have uh, feedback or future requests, you know, get them in on GitHub and uh, yeah, we'll try to make it happen. Hey, Steve, where, where do they find you on GitHub? I know you're active. What, what's our, our URL? If our, our, do you know offhand? Or? Uh, class, well, class is at uh, slash Google slash class. It's in the Google org. Um, not, in the, not in the Google Workspace uh, org, um, but yeah, uh, github.com slash Google slash Clasp is the repository. There's an issue tracker there. You can file uh, whatever feedback uh, you think is necessary. And if you want to submit a pull request, you want to add features, um, you know, happy to take a look at those and work with people who are interested in improving the tool. Well, so Marco's back with another question about a future ask, and it's a good one. It would be great to trigger an event when a user marks a task as finished. Is this in your development roadmap? What can you tell us? And I think, Matt, this may again go to you. What, what are some of these new integrations? What are, what's the support and API behind them for event handling and, and you know, cross-integration across the platform? Yeah, I think this falls back on the uh, perhaps uh, uh, same answer. Same answer I gave before. The classic uh, product manager answer, which is, uh, if I could make it happen tomorrow, I would. Uh, it's definitely on our on our radar. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Next one. Uh, this is the next one. I think is a really key question coming from Marka. 
I believe that's the name. Um, is it possible to find a workspace integration ready to use? This is a layup question. I love this question. That is built by a third party and I may find useful. One that is oriented towards private, proprietary enterprise use cases of integration. Uh, I am a firm believer, like I believe in sharing code. You should be able to buy code if you don't want to write code. And our marketplace is a great thing. Olaf, I know you're a big fan of the marketplace. I am. Tell us about the marketplace. What's the opportunity there? Um, yeah, so the, the answer is definitely yes. Um, so if you go to workspace.google.com uh, slash marketplace, you can find a large amount of, of great applications um, created by our partners uh, or others or our community. Um, they can share them there. So you can also uh, use it to um, when you create your own solutions. You can publish them to the marketplace. You can publish them internally um, or you can publish them uh, externally to your enterprise depending on um, how you want to share your solution. But yeah, if you're looking for um, out-of-the-box solutions or you want to buy a solution from a third party, um, go to workspace.google.com slash marketplace. And awesome. Do this. that. Do that. There's a lot of great solutions up there, many with tens and tens and tens of millions of installs. Um, last question, guys. we got time for one more. Let's do one more question. Again, this is from Julian. He's got some great ideas. Julian asks, will we get a way to gain, maybe read only access, uh, to some of the admin SDK APIs with having to off to super admin. Hmm, I would like that too, but I'm also a little leery of that. Things like building uh, buildings and rooms contain information system developers are interested in. Any way to bring security without um, kind of uh, making things dangerous? Do, is, is there anything we can talk on that? I don't handle this specifically. Uh, does anybody yeah. know? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, some, some of that actually exists today. Um, it's, uh, I forgot the, the name of the particular setting, but I know for at least on the user directory side, that is actually uh, accessible by non-admins if the admin enables it. Um, there's probably a lot more functionality. Uh, certainly the, yeah, the calendar resources and things like that um, are super useful as well. I, I don't know offhand uh, if those can be exposed uh, via an admin setting or not. Um, but you know, it's it's really good feedback. I think it's yeah, definitely uh, valuable. And like I said, we already do it for users. Um, so you know, I don't I don't see it as a fundamental like blocker that like you know it just has to make sure that the admins have the proper controls to make sure that you know they if they don't want to expose that information that they can they can opt in or opt out. Um, but yeah, I'll file I'll file a feature request and then see what can happen. Now I'll just. So, Maybe emphasize what uh, what Charles pointed out. Uh, everything is a trade off between ease of access and uh, security, uh, and certainly things in the admin API are often access to data which we want to make sure is reasonably locked down, only available to the the right parties. Um, so there's definitely always a trade off here, and it's a core um, a, a core expectation from our team, from Workspace in general. Uh, that we operate in a highly secure manner for for our customers. So we're definitely trying to um, find the balance here. Yeah, absolutely. Right when you're using with users and data and trust and trying to juggle juggle those all together. Absolutely. Hey, with that, I think we're at time. First of all, I want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, most importantly, I want to thank our uh, hosts for those those candid questions, and obviously the folks asking them. Thanks very much. Um, so with it, guys, thanks so much. Uh, just a few thoughts for me on the way out here. First of all, always, always, always appreciate your questions, your feedback. Uh, I love the enthusiasm. I love the ideas that you're bringing to us. You can always find us and reach us. We would love your feedback all the time. If you want to get in touch with us real easy, I will throw this out there. Chaz Maxson on Twitter. You can DM me. Uh, the community will help support uh, if I get too many questions as well, too. So I'm happy to do that. Also, do want to plug one thing. We also have a community show called Totally Unscripted. We run every week. So go to YouTube, check out Totally Unscripted, where we talk about all things workspace development. And with that, we'd love to hope to see you uh, at the next I.O. or at Next. We want to hear about your solutions. We want to see your solutions. We want to check them out in the marketplace. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you building on workspace. And with that, I say goodbye. We'll see you hanging around I.O. Cheers, everybody.